Hey guys, and welcome to the video here today. I'm going to show you the latest method on how to bypass the Google quota exceeded limitation that sometimes pops up when you're trying to download a file from Google. I had an older video that I did back in May of 2019. That method lasted a long time, but then at some point, I believe in late August here of 2020, Google went ahead and patched it. So this is super easy to set up very quick. It's only going to take me maybe a couple of minutes or a few minutes at most to show you how to do it. This video is broken down into basically two sections. The first is the actual tutorial itself, which is super quick. And then the second part is just nothing but information on the process that Google will be doing the automated process, because what I'm going to show you is super easy easy to set up and do most of the work is going to be done by Google's automated process, but it's very lengthy. So once I'm done with the tutorial, which is going to be quick and easy at that point, I'll tell you what I'm going to be talking about in the information section and what I'm going to be covering. And you could decide whether you want to continue watching the video or not. So let's go ahead and start the tutorial portion and we'll get that knocked out real fast. All right. So first things first, head on over to your Google Drive and we are going to create a folder. Before we do that, I just want to head on over to my start section. I'm going to show you right now. There is nothing there. It doesn't matter whether you have files in here or not. I'm just showing you for tutorial purposes that as of right now, there's nothing in there. So go ahead and go to your drive. You are going to create a new folder here, either right click and click on new folder, or you can go up here and click on new folder. Either way, you can name this folder anything you want. It does not matter. We're going to call this folder test. And there it is. Now, when we go into it, you can see there are no files in it. Let's go back out, leave your Google Drive open, head on over to the file that's causing the issue of the uh, quota being exceeded. We're going to click download and you can see it gives us the message. No problem. We'll go ahead and we will bypass that here in a minute. Now, at this screen, the goal is for us to make a shortcut of this file onto the Google Drive. There's a couple of ways to do this. If you see this icon present, this will add a shortcut of this file to your Google Drive. So you can click on that or you can click on the three dots and select add star. It literally does not matter which one you choose. The only difference is where the shortcut will appear which doesn't matter either because we're going to end up moving it. So pick either one, but just in case this icon doesn't appear, let me show you that this works via the star method. So I'm going to click add star. You will get the confirmation in the lower left corner. Let's head on over to the Google drive. If I go to my start section, you'll see the file is there. If you don't see it, just hit refresh once or twice and it should appear. If you chose the add shortcut to my drive option with the icon, then this file will appear somewhere here on the root of your Google Drive. And if it doesn't just hit refresh once or twice and it should show up. All right. So if you have that file on the root of your Google Drive, you can just grab the file and drag it into the folder that you created. You can also right click on the file, hit copy, go into the folder you created once in there, right click and hit paste and it'll paste it in there. Either way, it doesn't matter if you did the star method, just go over to where the file is in your start section and do the same thing. Either right click on it and hit copy, go into the folder and paste it in there, or you can drag it into that folder. I'm going to drag it in. I'm just going to hold on here to the file, go to my drive, drag it into that test folder and it will make a copy of it in there. It will also leave this one here. You no longer need this one anymore. You can delete it if you want. So let's go back to my drive. Let's go to the test folder and you can see the file is now in here. So at this point, once you have that file in your folder, go ahead and head back out, highlight that folder, right click on it, click on download, and you will see in the lower right hand corner, it will say preparing the download and that it is zipping one file. And believe it or not, that is it. You will see your little progress circle pop up and it will start turning blue. However, this process is very lengthy. I'll go more into detail about that in the next section that has the additional information. 
All right, guys, and that is going to do it for the tutorial portion. At this point, if you want to stop watching, you can. Just before you go, don't forget to drop that like because it continues to support the channel and helps me to bring you all the content that I do on here. Anyway, in this additional information section, everything that you see here is what I'm going to be covering. Probably not in this order, but by the time I'm done, everything here will be covered and probably a couple of other things as well. How long per one gig approximately does this zipping process take? Does your internet speed affect the zipping time? Can you have more than one file in the folder? The progress circle is stuck and it doesn't seem to be filling up. What should you do? How are these zip files named and in what format? Because they're actually not in .zip, they're in .rare format. And I'll also cover how they are named. Does doing work on the PC slow down the process? Will the process resume if you close your browser? Will it pick up where it left off? Does the free space in your Google Drive matter? The short answer this time around is actually no, believe it or not. So let's go ahead and let's start the additional information section. All right, so first things first, let's start with this little progress circle. Within about a minute, couple minutes, or a few minutes, depending on the size of your file or files, it will get about 10% full. You'll see it'll be just a little bit blue. It will actually stay there for a long period of time. It depends how large your file or files are. Once it passes the halfway mark of zipping up everything, then you will see the circle will turn halfway blue. It will just jump from about 10% to about halfway. Then once it's completely finished with the entire zipping process, then your file or files will begin to download and the window will close. You will not see the little circle turning blue slowly. It just goes from like 10% to about halfway and then it just disappears and your files start downloading. If it runs into a problem, you'll see an error message somewhere on your screen telling you that you ran into an issue and it'll tell you what it is. So if you don't see it moving for a long time and it stays stuck blue in one little area and you don't see an error message, then don't worry about it. It's working. Just let it do its thing. So if you don't see the little circle getting filled up little by little, don't worry. It's not going to. It's still working in the background. Now, this can be, as I mentioned before, very lengthy. During my testing, I found that each gig took around three and a half to four and a half minutes to complete the zipping process. So a three gig file took a total of around 14 minutes or so yesterday during testing. A five gig file took around 17 to 18 minutes minutes. And when I did both files combined, it took around 28 ish minutes, maybe close to 29 in order for them to be done. This morning, I did the same three gig file and it was done in about 11 minutes. So it was a little bit quicker. This process happens in Google's and in their servers. So your internet speed does not affect this. You can have gigabit internet and it will not make the zipping process any faster. The only thing affected by your internet speed is the speed at which the zip file or files download from Google once they are done. So once that file is done, it will be in a rare format. In other words, .rar. You can use WinRare, 7-Zip, or any other zipping program to extract the file. That zipped file, the name it will have will be the name of the file that is in your folder. It will not be named after your folder. So whatever the file is called that is in the folder, that is what that zip file will be called. You can have more than one file in your folder. So you can have three files in here, four files in here, as many as you want. The thing is, of course, it's going to take longer and Google will do one file at a time and it will not begin to download them until all the files have been zipped. So if you have three files in this folder, it will zip each one individually. And then once all three are done, then it will download them all three at once and you will have three separate rare files in your PC. And in case I didn't mention it before, you are getting the full file. It is not downloading the shortcut. The shortcut, it contains information that Google needs to be able to get the entire file. So once it has been downloaded, even though the shortcut might only be 20, 30 megabytes in size, what actually gets downloaded is the full complete file, whether it's a gig, five gigs, 10 gigs, 20 gigs, however large it is, that is what you end up getting. 
And next, let's talk about size. And the good news here is that with this bypass, apparently the size of the file does not matter because Google is doing all this processing on their end. The file is either getting zipped from its original location or Google's making a copy of it in their servers, either in a cache folder or a temp folder or something like that. Basically, the file is not being put into your Google Drive. This means that if you want to download a file that is, let's say, 20 gigs in size, but you only have 15 gigs of free space, you will still be able to download it because we are not copying the entire file into our drive. The only thing that takes up space are the shortcut files and they are incredibly small. So you don't have to worry whether you have enough space or not because the file should always download. This is one of those rare times where size doesn't actually matter. And that, my friends, is all I have for you for the information section of this video. And for the video in general, we've come to the conclusion. If you found anything here helpful, informative, useful in any way, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel and want to show your support, all you need to do is just hit that like button. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everybody out there. Be careful, be safe, but make sure you have fun. And I will catch you on the next one.